Essential Oils for the Outdoors. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to be giving you a class tonight. This is, class is brought to you by this group of women and men that have all joined together on a wellness journey. Uh, we come from all different backgrounds. We come from all different families. Um, some of us have kids. Some of us don't. Uh, all walks of life and we've all the thing we have in common is this wellness journey that we're on together and we have formed this amazing community and we support each other and go to each other with anything and to solve our problems and we're all here to help you guys get on your wellness journey as well I'm gonna give you a little disclaimer because we have to the information that we share is not meant to diagnose treat cure or prevent any diseases we are not doctors we have gathered research and personal testimonials to create this class in order to share the experiences and open one's mind to alternative methods. Tonight's agenda, how to oil up before stepping out the door, targeted essential oils for the elements, seed to seal, essential oils for pest management, essential oils to attract pollinators, essential oils and companion planting, and of course, how to get these amazing oils and share them with others. Let's talk oils. All right. My name is Kim and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the ways you can protect yourself from the outdoor elements. And uh, I live in Florida, so those outdoor elements are all the time, every day, um, all day. As you can imagine, the sun here, if you're not from Florida, is most of the time shining and um, hot. So one of the ways that I can protect myself is using sunscreen. and uh, Young Living has two amazing products. They have a sunscreen SPF 10 and a sunscreen SPF 50. And um, it really is one of the most luxurious and clean feeling sunscreens that I've ever put on. And it's natural and toxin free. Our skin is the largest organ and we absorb so much through it. So we want to make sure that we know what we're putting on our body and that what we are putting on our body is actually going to help us and it's not going to clog up our systems or cause any other issues. Young Living's Mineral Sunscreen Lotion, it provides protection against UVA and UVB rays without any harsh chemicals. It's non-greasy, which is a plus, and it offers, um, like I said, a broad spectrum SPF 10 and an SPF 15 protection. It's naturally derived plant and mineral-based ingredients, and it includes non-nano zinc oxide, which is a physical UV blocker. The formula is lightweight. Um, it goes on really smooth. It stays when you're in the water. It's sweat resistant for about, I think it's water and sweat resistant for about 80 minutes. So you can enjoy the beach, you can go in the water, you can go in your pool. Uh, the sprinkler system, whatever whatever helps you cool off for the summer, or maybe you're in the garden and you're sweating it out. The ingredients in the sunscreens also also include um, essential oils like helichrysum, carrot seed, and sa sacred frankincense. What I like about this, sometimes when you put on sunscreens that have zinc in it, you get like this white coating. Um, I know I've done that before. This does it. It goes on smooth doesn't have a white residue. It doesn't clog your pores and you sort of avoid breakouts. So you don't have to worry about your sunscreen causing you any other issues. It's just an easy way to add to your little outdoor pocketbook of things. There's a picture of the sunscreen. It comes in a tiny little bottle and a little goes a long way. You really don't have to use a lot. And one of the cool things about the sunscreen is I use it with my Savvy Minerals foundation powder. I put a little bit of sunscreen in my hand and I shake the powder into my hand and mix it in with the sunscreen. And then my makeup becomes protected with the sunscreen as well. So that's a two, it's a twofer. <laughs> All right, go ahead, let's flip to the next one. Ah, now if you're gonna protect the rest of your body, don't forget to protect your lips. Um, Young Living has a lip balm line. They have cinnamon, grapefruit, and lavender. And these lip balms completely nourish your lips. So we don't wanna forget, those are one, lips are an easy thing to forget about. So even if you're not going out in the sun and going to the beach, even if you're just going outside or going in your car, always protect your lips too. And um, what you could do is you could take a little bit of the SPF from the mineral sunscreen and then you could put that on and then you could put the lip balm over it. Those lip balms are infused with essential oils. Um, like I said, lavender is one of them. Grapefruit is one of them. Cinnamon, cinnamon is one of them. And uh, it also has wolfberry seed and antioxidants. 
it helps to seal in the moisture and prevent dehydration. So you have nice, smooth lips that don't look dried out, especially coming off winter months. That's fun. Oh man. Okay. So if you're like me, I am fair skinned. I was not blessed with angels, goddess, tan skin. <laughs> And therefore, <laughs> if I don't put sunscreen on, I am a shiny red lobster. <laughs> and if by chance you are out and about and you forget your sunscreen, you want to make sure that you are protecting your skin and calming it down and soothing it. And one, ways to, one way to do that is to use Young Living's Lavaderm After Sun Spray. It soothes and cools your skin. It provides immediate relief, and I can attest to that because I've used it numerous times. It helps moisturize um, and help to protect from peeling, um, and it also helps to um, promote healthier looking skin. It doesn't contain any alcohol, parabens, phthalates, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Petrochem See, if you can't pronounce it, you might as well not use it, right? <laughs> Petrochemicals, preservatives, fragrances, or other synth synthetic colorants. Lavaderm for me is not, I don't just associate it with sunburns. If you have bug bites, um, if you're outdoors and you get any other irritation, maybe you're cooking on the grill and you get a burn. Um, sometimes every time during the year, I get a sort of like a dermatitis where I don't know if I come in contact with something or it's just the change of the seasons, but I'll take that lavaderm and I'll just spray it on my arm. And it really does have a nice cooling sensation that provides relief. And it smells good because it's infused with lavender. And if you're thinking about hanging out in the outdoors, who else is out there besides the sun? The bugs. And in Florida, we have plenty of mosquitoes. And you girls up north, I know you've got mosquitoes. I don't see as many ticks here, but I know you guys have monster mosquitoes. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. We have them down here. I feel like the minute I open the door, they're like ready to attack. Um, and we get so much rain and it's, it's the tropics down here. So there's so much moisture and they, it, we're just a, a natural breeding ground for all of them. But one of the, you know, like, I think one of like the, the hot words that everybody's like, when you say it deet, everybody's like, Oh gosh, no, don't, what does, does that bug spray have deet? You know, you're, you're always worried about what you're putting on your skin, especially with bug spray. And some of that stuff really stinks. It's not good for you. So Young Living came out with their own insect repellent, and it, it was tested to repel mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas. And I wish I had the video, because I've seen it float around on um, various but just Young Living groups where the insect repellent was put around a tick, and the tick didn't know where to go. It didn't like the smell. Um, so it really it does work. It repels naturally with 99% active ingredients plus 1% vitamin E. It's 100% plant-based. That's like ringing in, in bright lights for me, 100% plant-based. Um, who, who thought that, you know, nature's creatures would be repelled by nature's plants, right? Um, it's hypoallergenic and it's non-greasy. I, I, I don't mind putting on this repellent and going to bed. Whereas in the past when I've used other insect repellents, I'm like, I need to shower. It contains no DEET, no parabens, that other fla la 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 word there, no petrochemicals, no preservatives or fragrances, and no synthetic colorants. Um, and it's really just kind of a, you know, like that's like the worst thing. Mosquitoes for me, and even other gnats or bugs that come out at night, like, it totally ruins your evening, right? Like whether you're going out for a hike or you're just going outside to enjoy the, the nice air or just, you know, because you're coming off winter months and you feel like, man, I've been secluded. I want to go outside. And you don't want to be met with these nasty bugs that want to just jump all over you. You want to enjoy your evening. And so I love knowing that I have something that I can put on that's not going to ruin my summer months. That this product actually might not be available for certain states like California or South Dakota due to state regulations, but I, I would just double check that to just make sure if you're in any of those states that you're able to, to order this product. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. I think that's uh, the pH is silent, so I think it's phthalates. Phthalates, I still don't like it. I don't either. <laughs> I like your word for it better, fa la la la. Fa la la la, <laughs> it's got no fa la la la. 
All right, so this is the um, insect repellent. This is the size of it. Here's my palm. So it's not something that's easy to fit into your pocket. It has a lid, so the, the top of it has like a little squirty um, component to it. You could take this off and you could put a, um, like a spray top on it to make it a little bit easier. I usually put it on when I put it on the kids. I just rub it in my hand and then I rub it all over them. If you didn't have this or you wanted to make something that was that you could put in your pocket, but you could create your own bug off spray mist, if you will, and you can use Young Living's essential oils, including citronella, lemongrass, lavender, purification, and peppermint. Throw in a little bit of witch hazel, some distilled water, and then you've made your own using Young Living's essential oils. The oils that are used in the insect repellent from Young Living is citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, geranium, spearmint, thyme, or thyme, and clove. Um, and it also contains vitamin E. If it was out of stock or if you didn't have this on hand and you're in a pinch and you had these other oils, this would be a great way to um, help keep the bugs away in a pinch. Next slide, please. Ah, uh, DIY. I'm gonna show you, um, we talked about a little spray mist before. I got a pretty little roller ball, and this is something that definitely can fit in my pocket, can definitely fit in my purse or throw it in the car, keep it in there. I've got a roller filament that I can put on top of it and a nice lid to keep it in place. Um, and one of those, we were talking about citronella before. So I've got my citronella oil. Which you get free this month. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was gonna point that out. Um, and a nice big bottle too. It's not like I didn't like citronella. I thought like, oh, that was like one of the, the oils that I was gonna stay away from. But it really has a refreshing scent. And I find that I'll like throw it in the diffuser or I'll even throw it just if I'm trying to like purify the air a little bit. It just has a really great scent and, and it repels bugs. The bugs don't like it. Because we're, so, we're used to the commercial citronella that's adulterated. Yeah. So I don't always keep my citronella plants alive or my lavender plants. So <laughs> when in a pinch, use citronella oil, which comes directly from that plant. And what you could do is you can add, um, I have a, I think this is a 10 milliliter roller ball, roller bottle, and you could put four drops in here, but I'm going to put eight because I'm going to double it up. And then... One of the next oils you can use, which is another oil that I really didn't think I would like at all, but it's grown on me the more that I use it. I love using it for cleaning. It's tea tree. And that one you put three. So because I doubled up, I'm gonna do six. Hope you're counting. <laughs> um, and then the next one is lavender. Lavender is such a sweet scent to me, and I find it ironic that mosquitoes do not like lavender because that's the saying, like, oh, mosquitoes like you because you're so sweet. I was like, but lavender is sweet. So, and it has such an amazing scent, and since it's the queen of all oils, of course, we'll include it in here. We'll put six drops. And then the last one, which I love, is peppermint. So peppermint's a really great oil, not just for this to keep the bugs away. What do we say? Two, we'll do four. Um, peppermint in general is, is a great thing to have in your purse. It's good for headaches. So if you're out in the sun too long and you need some, some headache relief, you can use peppermint. I have my V6 vegetable oil from Young Living. And then I'm gonna fill up the rest of my bottle with that. So you put your roller top on. If you have a little trouble putting your roller top on, you could just put it on. And then once you put your cap on and screw it back down, it pops the roller right on. Give it a little shake every time you go to pick it up and roll that baby on. Smell amazing and keep the bugs away. What I was saying about peppermint oil real quick is that it's really a great oil to keep on hand at all times too in your purse, in your car. It's good for dehydration. So if you're... Um, you know, you've been out in the sun all day, you have some water, or you want to freshen up your water, you want to change up the flavor, you can use peppermint or lemon. 
Um, and it's really just a great pick-me-up oil. So if you've had a long day and you still got to keep going because you're going to like party into the night or something, <laughs> another great oil for outdoors. Peace and calming can be photosensitive heat. oil. So you want to be careful if you have it on outside when you're in the sun. But what I like about this oil and for summertime is that like, you know, if you've been going all day outside or you're doing things outside and you just want to unwind or maybe it's towards the end of the day and you're hopping into your hammock or you're chilling on your patio and you just want to kind of infuse that chillness and that relaxation, peace and calming is another great tool to have in your, your kit. And it comes in the starter kit. So going back to peppermint, oils for the outdoors. I always think of outdoors. I think of drinks. I think of well, water if you don't have any cocktails. But you can flavor your waters with these great vitality oils. You can use tangerine. You can use lime. You can use lemon, lavender, grapefruit. These are all great tools to have during the summer. Spice up your friends' drinks in the in the summer when you're out by the pool, um, throw it in your canteen if you're outside, you know, going on a hike. It's just another great way to just kick your water up a notch. Mm. Who's gonna give me some love for some ninja? So it's not an oil, <laughs> but in my book, it is like at the, almost at the top of the list of must have outdoor summer related, just, just a summer essential in general. I mean, if you don't know about Ninja Red, it is like the powerhouse of, of supplements by Young Living. It has so many antioxidants. It supports your overall wellness. It supports your energy levels. It supports your normal cellular function, your eye health. It's just a whole body supplement and it tastes amazing. And all you need is two ounces. So another great way to flavor your water, throw some Ninja Red in there. Um, and to complement that, you can get some Ninja Zing. I love Zing. It is a refreshing energy boost without artificial flavors, preservatives, um, no, no, I want to say fake caffeine, but that's not right. <laughs> no bad caffeine. <laughs> it's a, you know, when you think of like energy drinks, you think of um, Red Bull and you think of like five hour energy shots, things that are really going to make you going and get you jittery and Zing does not do that at all. It is a natural energy boost and a great way to enjoy your summer vacay. Um, oh, we talked about tea tree because I put it in my DIY. Um, and so these two, tea tree and lava mint, I wanted to put in here because when I think of summer essentials, you go, ladies, you got to take care of your feet. Men too. Yeah, you're going to go outside. You're wearing your sandals. You're going to go to the beach or whatever. Um, and you want to make sure that your toes and your your feet are in tip top condition. And one and tea tree is a great oil for taking care of your, your nails, um, for skincare, and it has amazing cleansing properties. So if you are outdoors on a hike and you also got a cut or something, uh, you can use tea tree to help cleanse uh, any um, cut that you might get during that time. Even a bug bite, I would put it on there. Um, and then lava mint. Oh, if you haven't tried lava mint yet for your, your feet, it is heavenly. It has this really sort of sweet mint aroma and it's not, um, it's not a harsh, scratchy pumice kind of material that you would use to clean your feet. It really is refreshing and has a, a little bit of a cooling sensation and makes your, your feet and toes feel amazing and ready for the summer. The lava mint also contains black volcanic sand from Iceland. It also has um, volcanic rock pumice from Italy. It has diet diatomaceous earth from the seas of Denmark, and it has coconut shell powder from France. So, yeah, like you're completely international using this one, right? You feel like <laughs> you're like my toes have been to France. They've been to Denmark. They've been to Italy. <laughs> um, is your body heat to transform the cool gel into um, like sort of a, like a milky lotion. And it's uh, just a rich emollient. It has moisturizing properties. It's got some glyc glycerin and squalane to hydrate and condition the skin. And um, it also has that soothing lavender scent combined with peppermint. Like I said, it gives that sort of sweet, light cooling sensation. Last summer, I always try to like keep ahead of my stock because I'm always afraid, like, especially in the summer months, things are going to like, everybody's going to be like, yes, I need all the supplies. And then all of a sudden I'm going to be like, no, it's out of stock. Um, sometimes in the summer, especially in Florida, and my kids remind me all the time, 
oh, I hate summer because it's always raining. In Florida, it's always raining. But we can make it feel like summer inside. So there's some essential oil blends that we can use to sort of make us feel like we're still in the tropics or outside or enjoying the, the citrus scents. Um, so if it was one of those days or you're going on vacation and all of a sudden you're in the hotel and you can't get out, you can make this roller blend to keep in your pocket. You can use lemon, peppermint, rosemary, and ylang ylang. Um, and I think this particular slide talks about some crystals you can add to the roller ball of tool. But just top that, top those oils off with some coconut oil or some sweet almond oil and, and roll that on and you'll have the sweet scent of summer right in your hands. And then we talked about Lavenderm earlier, but if you didn't have Lavenderm and you needed some sort of cooling body mist to cool you off after the, you know, the day at the pool or the day at the beach, you can also make your own. You can use Young Living's Laven uh, Peppermint Lavender. You can use a little bit of aloe vera distilled water and you'd have a nice cooling, refreshing body mist. And then, like I talked about earlier, I always like to have peace and calming wherever I go. Um, but if I didn't have that and I wanted to, and I always take a diffuser with me to a hotel. So if we go on vacation in the summer, I always have one handy and I'm always carrying around thieves. It's like cleanse the hotel first. <laughs> um, but at, you know, at the end of the day, I still want the kids to unwind. So this sort of relaxing unwinding diffuser blend, you can use lavender, eucalyptus globulus and some lemongrass, which the lemon in it is so refreshing, and um, it's a great addition to all your summer blends. I'm excited. All right. Ooh, summer night massage oil, ladies or men. Do we have any men on here today? I haven't even looked. Um, well, men, you could make a summer night's massage oil for your ladies. Um, bergamot, grapefruit, cedarwood, and black pepper. I know black pepper throws you off a little bit, but it adds a little spice to your massage oil. But I love bergamot. It has such a, a beautiful aroma. And I use it in a lot in the, of the perfume blends that I make. But you combine those and you can use, um, you can use Young Living's uh, V6 vegetable oil or whatever oil, carrier oil of your choice and use a nice, even if it, even if it wasn't for your man and you just wanted to rub on something after a shower to, to massage your legs after a long day's hike or, or just to relax, you can use this massage oil to help you do that. And these are just a couple more diffuser blends that you can um, use in your diffuser to help you feel like it's summer. My personal favorite, mojito, especially if I don't have it in a drink next to me. <laughs> and the rainbow bright one actually is missing. It's, um, I cut it off by accident, but it's one drop geranium to add to that one. Um, but all of these citrus flavors just so invigorating and so brightening that when you diffuse them throughout the house, it just smells amazing. And I think the herb garden one will go along with what you're going to talk about next. Um, thank you, Kim, so much. I learned so much. I mean, you know, you, you're in this for so long and you think, not, you never know everything. I, I know that. But the stuff that I think I should know <laughs> that I don't know, and I learn from these classes every time, it still blows my mind. Yeah, the, every, the oils are so versatile, and there's just so many combinations and uses that you can put together. Um, even if you don't have, you know, you know, you don't have the actual product, you know, Young Living's oils in itself just can provide so much support. Okay, thank you, ladies. That was awesome. Um, I really did. I learned so much as well. <laughs> I can't wait to get that foot scrub either. Like you're saying, all the continents. I. I want to be in all the continents. Right. <laughs> yeah. My feet have been to all the places. <laughs> and I loved all your blends. I can't wait to try that mojito blend. <laughs> I, I love having a little arsenal of like photos on my phone because I save them in my, my like a little folder because I want to flip back. And you don't really think like you get sort of like, you know, tunnel visioned when you look at your oils sometimes and you don't know like, oh, what's going to go together? What's going to smell great? So I love having... Uh, pictures like that to remind me like, oh, yes, I want a mojito. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. All right. So to start off, um, I am going to be focusing on gardening and essential oils. Lots of goodies. And like Kim started it off with how I'm kind of going to start my day. Before I go outside, I'm going to get the lavaderm mist or a spray, a rollerball blend, and probably really set up my diffuser. Oh. To start off, I just want to say that I thoroughly enjoy gardening 
and essential oils. So I feel like I have such a sense of accomplishment and empowerment when I combine the two. When they're coupled together, like I feel like my plants just are like, they're perked up, they love it. My plants love it as much as I love it. So that's great. Um, why exactly do you want to garden? One, because it's fun, it's amazing. It gets you in the dirt and the soil. But if you're putting bad things in your dirt and your soil, then that's not necessarily what you want to do. Um, you're, you're kind of doing that to get away from all that, to get away from the nasties in the grocery store and all that stuff. So we talked about greenwashing in some of our past classes, and I don't know if some of you guys are familiar with it, but even when things say they're up to standard, like organic, yes, that is always better, but it's not always the highest standard. So I just wanted to point out here that there is a difference between organic and young living seed to seal. And some people might get confused by this, that, oh, young living's not organic. Why are they not labeled organic? Well, this is going to show you some, some things here. So let me point it out. 5% doesn't have to be organic material to be labeled organic. So right there that says something. And also when you're doing organic, you can use organic pesticides, herbicides, germicides and all those things, as long as they're organic, which can still contain 5% non-organic material. So at the end of the day, it's really not the highest standard. You really either have to know your company, your company, you know, the company should really educate people on this. And that's why I love Young Living, because they want to share, and sharing is when you know to trust someone. Um, the other standards is that for organic, it takes about three years and they always do these things where there's transition periods. So I know a lot of farms when they're starting off, they want to be organic, but they're not. So they, they have a transition period. For someone to become seed to seal, it takes five years minimum for the standard. So all of our farms that we own, I have come up to the seed to seal standard and those relationships took years. They took a long time to get people there. And same with our CBD uh, line, like we, I think maybe about a year ago, the CBD line came in and they had to, in order for us to kind of be partners with them, they had to come up to our seed to seal standard. So it's amazing when we can get other companies to go to such a high standard. Um, we weed by hand, the pest control. There's so many amazing things that Young Living does. At the Mona Farm in Utah, they're experimenting currently in one of their greenhouses with using excess sheep wool from a local brooder. They don't have sheep, but they're using them to help their goldenrod seedlings in their greenhouse. Why? Because wool holds 20 times its weight in water. And in greenhouse conditions, it's very dry because it's just a different environment than nature. Um, you don't have as much soil to kind of hold all that water in. Um, and normally you would use vermiculite. If anyone has made like homemade potting soil, um, it's those little white specks that you always see in there. Um, and the reason why you do it is so it can hold water and you want to just put it in there. It's got, it's a silica, which means it's made of multiple minerals such as magnesium, aluminum, and iron. So vermiculite has some benefits to it. It's really important when you're doing plants. You know, when you have succulents, you really want that drainage. So you have those large rocks, but with like different plants, you don't want that much drainage. You want to hold the water. But the only thing is that vermiculite is so expensive. Vermiculite costs $3 a pound. Well, with the wool, it's costing them 22 cents a pound. It's much more economic, which is amazing. That means you get these amazing oils at an amazing price, which we already know we're getting that amazing price. We're getting a deal because Young Living is doing the hard work and the research to understand how to make their practices even better. Now, this is a practice. They are, it's not official. They're just testing here. Um, but imagine what that's going to do, how many doors that's going to open, how many other things can come from that, right? Um, they're also going to try and mix it into their soil, um, which apparently you can get wool pellets at the gardening store. I did not know that, but they're going to try and do that as well. So that's really good. And wool has so many nutrients, nitrogen, magnesium, calcium, sulfur. So with the seed to seal standard, it focuses on that soil microbiome and making healthy soil. I also have a fun fact, which I actually found out from doing these classes when we were doing Essential Oils 101, like Chantel was saying, you think, you know everything about the Essential Oils 101. I've done this class, what, like four or five times, right, ladies? And I find out something new every time.
I was like so impressed with one of these sets. At Young Living, they don't strip constituents to make their oil smell better. We know that. They don't mix species of the same oil and they don't spray weed killers or pesticides or herbicides or use any genetically modified seeds. Again, that seed to seal standard. They spend $1,200 per acre to hand weed lavender instead of the industry standard of $60 an acre for the same exact plant. Um, the industry standard is $60 because spraying pesticides is much cheaper than hand weeding. So they don't distill it in any solvents like hexane. Their oil is not tainted with mercury, arsenic, glyphosate, <laughs> or any poison because of the standards that they keep, no toxic chemicals. Um, and they know when to harvest and they have that science team to back all them up. So I think that's amazing. And that's exactly why I feel comfortable using these oils with my plants and my plants love it. Um, but yeah, so essential oils in general play a very big role. They help to repel insects, kill invasive weeds, um, fight off fungus. Others may attract pollinators. They're supernatural. They won't harm the plants. It's kind of like the same way how you would handle it for yourself. You want to handle it for your plant. Let's just chat quickly a little bit more about gardening. One of the main reasons I told you why I started gardening was because I felt so empowered when I did it. The first time I started gardening, I didn't expect anything. I was like, I'm going to do tomatoes. Everyone said tomatoes was super easy. And then I like failed because my tomatoes weren't growing when everyone's were growing. And then out of nowhere, I had all these tomatoes. And I was like, wow. And it was super late. I think it was like a month behind everyone else's tomatoes. It just opened my eyes to what dreaming and having a vision can actually do because I had no idea I could produce that. It was just, I did it, best of luck. And look at that. I have so much of abundance. I didn't even know I could do. So I felt very empowered and powerful. Making a garden is amazing. I feel like kids love it. I know one of the girls, Caitlin, I'm just going to say, has this like tinker garden that she loves doing. I think that's the best idea ever because getting outside and in that garden or like hiking, it brings out the kid in you. Like you just feel like you can play and you know, no worries, akuna matata, really. Um, and I love that because your imagination is unlimited. You want to put good stuff in, in your plants because you're eating them and what you put on your body, you can, in your body. So let's take a second to think about all this stuff. Pesticides, um, it's really any substance that's used to kill, repel, or control certain forms of plants or animal life that are considered to be pests, because you know not all animal life are pests. Uh, the term pesticides includes herbicides, insecticides, Permeticides, which may include insect growth regulators, nematicides, molecule sides, now bacteria sides. Just think about the word side. How many times did I say that? It's in every single one of these. So I was so curious. I was like, what does side actually mean? Um, so when I questioned the root word, I looked it up and it, side means killing or destruction. So think like genocide. And when you think about soil, you don't want genocide. I mean, it's just not what you want. You want good bacteria to flourish. Um, so I don't really like using those things. And I started to question, why would I put them in my plants when I want good bacteria, healthy soil, good nutrients coming to me? So I really started questioning that and felt very comfortable using Young Living's essential oils to help my plants flourish because I was almost paralyzed at one point. Like I want, I had blossom end rot and I was like, what do I do? I don't want to just go to the store and grab this when it's got all these negative things in it. Um, if you don't see the problem, I'm just going to make it a little bit more clear. Something that kills everything also kills all the good guys. And the soil has the microbiome which is the immune system for the plants to thrive. With a weakened, non-intact soil microbiome, you have mineral depletion in the soil, which leads to food mineral depletion and ultimately human mineral depletion, because that is how you get your nutrients, by ingesting those foods. Um, and then I have a quote by Dr. Gary Price. He said, you can trace every single sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. I think that's very telling that the soil alone is just a huge component in 
the kind of plants that you're going to be growing, which that's why I love our Young Living Seed to Seal standard. Um, but again, just remember, there's no one panacea, no one cure-all to fix plants or humans or anything. Like you have to look at your plants and kind of see what they want. Let's drive home the good. By not using herbicides and pesticides on your plants, you reduce the amount of toxic chemicals in the air and in your water system. You use less transportation from fields to stores to houses. You save on fuel, eliminate toxic sources. Like you're helping the earth, you're helping you. Um, you're helping without even needing to do much. It's amazing. Um, not only that, but your home gardening can save you money. It's estimated that for every $1 you spend on a seed, tools and time, you get back nearly $2 in fresh produce. Talk about abundance, right? And we always say time is money and all that stuff. So I'm like, wow, that's an amazing like fact to know. Lastly, gardening improves your health by offering emotional, physical, and mental benefits, just like essential oils, um, which we do talk about that in our frequency class, just saying. Uh, gardening is great um, for grounding and earthing. It's just kind of when you get your feet in that healthy soil that I was talking about, those good microbes just get all over you and they help your microbiome. The dirt has a microbiome, you have many microbiomes. Your skin, being the largest organ, has its own microbiome. So that's super important to help the immunity. If the soil has immunity to help the plants, it's gonna help you have a strong immune system as well. So let's talk about some clever ways that we can use essential oils. I know you're not gonna be getting some wool or sheep hair in, in your little transplants because that's totally above me too. So let's talk about how we can get them in our garden. Let's talk about how we can grow abundantly without chemicals, maintaining a weed-free, pest-free garden, which can be challenging, especially when you're committed to not using those herbicides and pesticides. Let's kick it off with a few common insects found in gardens, flower beds, and lawns, along with essential oils to deter, deter them. So here I have a few of those common, kind of like pesky animals that you just don't really want involved in your garden. Ants, I feel like peppermint is almost in like every single one of these, not all of them, but when you think about these animals that kind of go into your garden, their sense of smell is very heightened. That's why they're attracted to your garden. So they don't like any strong smelling oils like peppermint or any of those spearmint. They're all like in the mint family. And I know um, you talked about what, lemongrass before. We definitely mentioned tea tree. So they're in, you could use them for you and your garden, which is amazing. Um, some other things too, I know here it doesn't have all of the animals, but if you think about it, deer, they're another pesky one, especially for us Hudson Valley folks. Lavender and peppermint, if you want to keep them away. Snakes, um, there's a bunch of garden snakes. Clove and cinnamon, you want to get those hot oils for those animals to stay away. Bunnies, peppermint again. Um, bears, bears, maybe when you're like going hiking. Pine oils, they also have a strong sense of smell, but they're kind of, bears are attracted to lavender and all the other oils that are com more common for the other pests. So definitely pine essential oil for bears. Um, spiders, they don't like lavender, rose, lemon, orange, peppermint, slugs. If you have those, get your hands on some cedar wood or hyssop. Cedar wood is so inexpensive. It's almost one of the, the cheapest essential oils I could find. I have my own testimonial for cedar wood for my scalp. And it, like I always have, it's always in my cart, it's always in my ER. Um, I think it's like $11 for a 15 ml. So the fact that you can use it on your plants as well is amazing. You could use it to stop the slugs or the snails. And then if you need help discouraging vermin, such as mice or rodents, peppermint again, weeds, that's another common one, right? Thieves essential oil and thieves household cleaner. Any of them, both of them, whatever you wanna do. A few drops in the water that you water your plants with, or if you do, um, the wood chips, even spraying the wood chips to help because the wood chips help keep in moisture. I don't do wood chips. I have contain a container garden, so I don't need them unless if anyone thinks it's a good idea for me to get wood chips, let me know. Um, but it's a very effective weed killer. You mix five drops Thieves essential oil and one teaspoon of the Thieves liquid soap and vinegar, and there you go. 
you spray it on the weeds. Don't spray it on the plant, spray it on the weeds or spray it on the soil too, but not on the plant because you want the plant to flourish. If your plant is having like fungus problems, then, then you could definitely spray it on the plant. So when they say that the Thieves Household Cleaner is like an all-purpose cleaner, they really mean it. Like it's already got a million uses for your house and the cost effectiveness of it is amazing, which we do a, literally a whole class on like Thieves. Um, I had no idea that you could use it in the garden. So I like loved finding that out. It's got, Thieves has got clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. So even if you have those oils individually, you can still use them for the same targeted reasons. If you're looking for essential oils to help alleviate bug bites and stings, um, I know we kind of went over that a little bit, but as a gardener, it's almost like inevitable, <laughs> especially if you're, you're planting in the soil, you get the ants or the little bugs that are just attracted to um, those, which are not necessarily bad. Um, you might want to just put some, rub some on your hands so they kind of stay away from your hands with the, I think with the spray, that none of the bugs wanted to go near it. It like literally didn't know where to go. It would do the same thing for your hand. Just put it on your hand and they're just gonna wanna stay away because their smell, they're just gonna just like, whoa, I don't wanna go near that. Lavender, chamomile, and basil. They all help relieve stings from bees, wasps, and ants. Um, on a lighter note, for any four-legged friends you have, cats or dogs, Again, their sense of smell is very heightened, but they love going in the garden. Obviously, if you love being in your garden, your animals love being next to you, so they're gonna wanna go with you and potentially could eat some of your food, right? Um, so in order to help with that, rosemary for dogs and cats, they both dislike. They just hate rosemary. It is very herbaceous. Like when you smell it yourself, you're like, wow, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty strong and potent. Black pepper, so that's another hot, like hot oil. Think about like when you put black pepper on your food, how fragrant that is. Um, so again, spraying it on your mulch or the ground to keep them at bay. I wouldn't recommend spraying it on your plants um, unless your animal's eating the plant, because then that would totally stop them from eating the plant. Um, but if your plant is doing fine, there's no need to spray that on them because, you know, it's it's flourishing anyway, so spraying it on the soil will be just fine. Um, peppermint is another good one. I feel like, again, I'm going to say peppermint a lot, which is also great because if you spray peppermint on the ground, um, it'll help keep the fleas at bay. If you're trying to suppress fungus, that's a pretty common one because 85% of plants really, they, they suffer from fungus problems, which is really just a lack of nutrients. And that fungus is thriving off of your plant's nutrients. So how do you stop that? Like moss and other fungus, you stop it at the soil, right? So your soil is lacking nutrients. You give them nutrients with your essential oils, just like you give nutrients for yourself. Like when your um, cousin Kimmy was saying the toenail fungus, tea tree, perfect for, for plants. You could totally use that for plants too, because it's the same situation. I feel like plants, they taught me so much about life and about myself. To repel insects, let's see, we got thyme essential oil. They're, they work for like chiggers, ticks, roaches. Um, we mentioned tea tree. Another like family member of tea tree is molecular. Lavender and pine again coming up here. It's all around great for insect repellents, um, especially that tea tree on hot days, um, just spray in the morning where the sun really hits those plants. And again, that's why I'm saying focus on the soil because the soil is where all the action is happening, right? So you don't need to spray it necessarily on the plant. And you could totally spray your plant, especially if your plant is seeing fungus and those things. But if it's healthy and you just wanna keep animals at bay, the soil is fine, that will do. And another note, neem oil, which is like more of a carrier oil, kills adult insects, larvas, and eggs. So that one's like, if you need to put that in any of your tinctures that you're making or your DIYs, do that. Cause it literally goes into their like inside system and dehydrates them, which I thought was pretty crazy. And also note that all these oils, they keep bugs away from your plants, but they also keep them away from your house. A fun like little tip there. Caitlin, I know you had some ant problems and cinnamon was a really good oil to use. So again, if you're having ants in your garden, cinnamon is a good one. Let's see, oregano essential oil. We use oregano essential oil for when we're really down and out. It's a potent oil. So it's no surprise that this one 
can be applied in the same manner to plants. Some other notable essential oils here are again the thieves line, clove, cinnamon, you could use them individually, rosemary, thyme, peppermint. Let's talk about citrus fresh a little and more of like house plants. You can use citrus fresh to purify plant soil, which I had some soil problems growing my garden in containers. You don't get as much nutrients because you're not directly in the ground. The ground has like a whole fungal system, you know, that whole circle, everything's a circle. It supports each other, it's biodynamic. Um, so when you kind of grow things in containers, you don't get as much nutrients as you would. So adding in those nutrients with essential oils and some other goodies is always awesome, like compost. So you can use citrus fresh to purify your soil. They're also great to keep the pests away in general, just because of the strong scent that they have, like lemongrass, I would consider that one the more of a citrusy oil as well, just because of those, that super zesty almost smell to it. Like citrus fresh, you could use it in your tea, like cousin Kimmy was saying, in your little cocktail or your little cold drink that you make, and then go ahead and put it in the water that you're watering your plants with. If, you're, if you notice that their soil needs a little uppity action um, and to purify it. So lemon is another alternative. You could add lavender, basil, or thieves for the same reason to kind of purify that soil. Another one that I like to use that I've actually been using a lot is Dye Guys, again, for soil health. I know we use it for digestive health and we use it in the sense to like help us digest our food. So I would even use this in compost or to help the compost break down for your compost piles. I'm not that advanced. I don't have a compost. I don't have enough room for a compost, but I can't wait to try this when I do get there. Dye Guys is made of tarragon, ginger, peppermint, juniper, lemongrass, anise, patchouli, and fennel. So compost is pretty much essentially when you're taking all the matter that you're not using and you're not letting it go to waste. And there's a ratio to it so it can like fester the, that good bacteria. So you would put ginger in it or peppermint in it or tarragon in it if you don't use it in your garden. So that's why these are all safe and it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, it's said that over 80% of the U.S. food is contaminated by herbicides and pesticides. So Dye Guides helps to break down those toxins. I got some of my plants from a store and I couldn't necessarily find the top of the line that I wanted. So I did spray my soil with that to cleanse my soil. I mean, it really makes me feel a lot more comfortable as well. And you could even use like thieves after you pick it from the garden, you can use thieves to clean off those plants. Because I make my own um, food, I feel comfortable using it straight from my garden. But I know some people, they get a little finicky with that. So don't be afraid to use like the thieves household cleaner or the thieves spray to spray some of your plants to help keep them clean. And when you're transplanting plants as well from a nursery, I would use Dye Guys because it's going to help your plant grow into the new soil. It's gonna really help with all that and encourage good bacterial balance. A good fertilizer as well. So for pollinators, we talked about how to, how to keep away those pesky animals, but I have mentioned we don't necessarily wanna keep all the animals away, right? We kinda of want some animals because they're good, like butterflies and bees, because bees are gonna help promote your plants to be healthy. They may be a little pesky because you don't want them near you, um, but they're really gonna help your garden flourish. So, some good oils. Valor is an amazing essential oil to use. So if you want to attract bees, just know that bees do prefer fragrance um, over butterflies. Butterflies really go for the colors. The fact that bees love the fragrance because they have a sensitive olfactory system, they um, really love marjoram, helichrysum, basil, sage, rosemary, fennel, chamomile, neroli, which is orange blossom, and bergamot. So they're super attracted to all these. So if you can't, like for me, I have a container garden. I can't necessarily grow all these plants. I would love to grow all of them, but I can't. But I still wanna attract the bees. I don't really have flowers. Um, so how do I attract them, right? And I bring those scents in because they're gonna be attracted to the scents. And even if they're not necessarily pollinating my plants, they're pollinating all the plants around me and they're attracted to my area. And I feel like in, Gardening diversity is really important for health. Um, in general, life overall, like diversity and inclusivity, I feel like is super key. 
Um, if you want to attract butterflies, go ahead and grab lavender, fennel, halichrysum, sage, ylang ylang, and like I said, even valor. Valor has spruce, cinnamon, blue tansy, frankincense, and geranium. Again, all great to attract the pollinators. The amazing thing is like pollinators are super important. So we're already helping the world by making better choices. Having the knowledge and the awareness of what our choices are doing for us, for our family, and for everyone around us, right? Most flowering plants depend on pollinators to reproduce and ensure fertile seeds and fruits. So the continuation of the, the abundance is super key here. Birds, bees, butterflies, moth, beetles, flower flies, they all pollinate. They search for nectar and pollen for food. I love when I see the bees doing their magic and their little, their little bee songs. Um, while at the same time, they're fertilizing the plants, thus allowing the plants to produce seeds, fruits, and nuts, which is what we love. Approximately a third of our food supply relies on pollinating birds, animals, and insects. There are many threats to these lovely pollinators worldwide, especially due to their loss of habitat via toxic herbicide spray, which is what we're trying to avoid here. If the pollinators don't want to be near these habitats filled with toxicity, then why would we? Many plants are ideal for attracting pollinators because of their scents and colors, and to ensure that the plant reproduction continues the way nature intended, bees and butterflies must continue to thrive. So I love knowing that I can contribute to this thriving ecosystem um, just by simply using my essential oils for me and my plants. And not only that, I hear they make your plants taste amazing, so I'm super excited. I personally, I'm growing a lot of tomatoes because Obviously, I had so much success last year, and I've been using basil essential oil, and I can't wait to see the flavor of my tomato plants especially, because you always add in basil, right? And I'm definitely going to still add in basil, um, but I can't wait because basil has this sweetness to it, and I feel like with the tomato and the vinegar and the mozzarella, I'm, get, I'm getting hungry over here if you couldn't tell. Let's move on to companion planting. Essential oils for companion planting are not only for pests and disease, because when you plant your plants with the companion, it really makes your plants thrive because they support each other. It's like a support system. They help control pests and disease. If you're growing sage, carrots, and cauliflower, they're all going to support each other. But also, if you have sage essential oil, add it in there. It can even be used in conjunction with the pollinator essential oils, which is amazing. For example, carrots and sage, they love growing together. So you can apply sage essential oil and vice versa. Some other examples, basil, my favorite right now, it can be used to enhance the growth and flavor of tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, and broccoli. So that's amazing. I'm growing right now tomatoes and peppers with basil all in one pot, and they are flourishing right now. I love it. Lavender essential oil helps with apples, grapes, and green beans. Chamomile um, improves the flavor of cabbage, cucumbers, and onions. I'm very curious about that one. And rosemary is a companion to cabbage, beans, carrots, and sage. Plus, the bees love it too. Let's also talk about the preferred method for incorporating these oils into your garden, right? Like, maybe you just don't want to always put it in your water that you're watering with. Maybe you use the hose so it's not ideal to like get your oils out. You can make a spray. You know, a little goes a long way. Four to eight drops to a gallon of water. That's all you really need. You can get cotton balls, like put peppermint purification and place them in where the animals are burrowing and nest to keep them away and they'll relocate because again, those odors are too strong for them. Um, so you can soak it and just put it in or you can put them in in the actual pots or wherever you think it's best. You could use them in teas. So your compost tea, you get like compost from a local farmer. You let that sit in your water and you that's what you put in your water. You could put it in there. Strips of fabric. If you own a lot of land and you have trees everywhere, you put the strips of fabric with the essential oils hanging on the branches. Um, or string. If you have rows and rows of plants, you don't want to be putting like little cotton balls everywhere, right? So you just get a string, you soak the string in like a nice like little cup, you soak it, and then you lay it out across your land. So my words of advice here, just make sure when you're spraying for pests and weeds, it's the last thing you do after working in the garden so it will have time to settle into the plants and soil. 
wait until after it rains to try and apply and try and apply it early in the morning. Also note that you will not need a fruit or vegetable spray to wash after because you're doing toxic free gardening. It's got all the amazing goodies already in there. So you don't even need to worry about that. It can go straight from your garden to your plate. It's amazing. Um, I also found a little fun thing, which I didn't even know was a thing, but apparently you can also try using Peace and Calming, Valor, Lavender, Jasmine, or Joy. Those are some fun blends to use. Like for me, I find those as luxury blends and your plants are gonna find them as luxury blends as well. Because when you're using oils in the garden, there's obviously so many different ways you can use them aromatically is just as important. Um, so like humans, plants breathe oxygen and can soak in the benefits of essential oils just by having them in the air around them. So by you even wearing them, you're benefiting your plants. That's amazing. Who doesn't love that, right? <laughs> I just wanted to share that most industrialized nations spend more than 90% of their lifetime indoors. That that's like American citizens. That's crazy. I definitely spend a lot of time indoors. I don't have much land and much property, but I try and get out there whenever possible, but 90%. Um, so get on out there. Gardening has taught me so many life lessons. I didn't even know like I was missing out on, right? If you do not have plants, this is the year you should start. Think of the Victory Gardens from World War II and how empowering it became to grow your own food. Know, know your frost date. Decide what seeds you want or if you want to do plants already. And again, remember, die guys, if you're not getting the best plants, that's okay. We don't always have to make the best decisions. We work around them. We work with what we got. Grab a garden planting calendar for your zone and then grab your tools. Your tools include your oily premium starter kit. It's amazing. It's set up for your gardening. Don't forget all the tips and tricks that Kim mentioned before you head out into that garden and to help you cool down and use essential oils for seasonal support and comfort. And also, if you don't have time to garden, we get it. CSA and farmer's markets are a great way to get started to know your local food. You gotta start somewhere, right? Everyone has to. Um, if you haven't gotten started on oils yet either, stick around to see how to get your oily journey started.